Wilson. Yes. Sir. I'm gonna have to gather my troops. Are you prepared to argue on this one first, then? Yeah, uh, no, no, I'm not prepared to argue the law beyond uh, generalities. I have a great deal of case material. As I say, I have not had access to library to, to streamline it, as it were. I would be willing to make a general argument, but would reserve the right to submit to the court a memorandum uh, All right, I'm going to rule on both of them until in the morning anyway. I want to hear the argument on both of them this afternoon. There's no more hearing testimony. How about Picano and... Do that during trial if you want to, Judge. I, I thought we had reserved that for during the trial. Now, these are, this is all the testimony to be taken on a motion. Mm, yes, sir. No, now, sir, we have, have some t we have some statement testimony that you need to hear and uh, some more Williams rule. Well, we've got some William rule questions, but they primarily will be not test witness testimony, as I understand. You do have some short testimony. All right. Well, let's take these two motions to suppress in that order. Are there argument on them now, and then we'll... Judge, we give you a chance to get Mr. Haggard. Yes, uh, I think you should, and we're going to proceed now with the argument on the Granger, and Mr. Bundy, you may proceed. There's a lot of cases in that box, and they all deal with consent search issues. Yes, sir. I'm sure that there's probably <laughs> that many more that you've missed. And I've missed quite a few. I was only, we're only dealing with a, <laughs> a couple jurisdictions. As I said, I'm going to argue the law broadly because I, I haven't had an opportunity to to complete my research on the status of Florida law, although I'm familiar with the parameters of the consent search issue as they exist here in Florida and those as outlined by the United States Supreme Court and other federal courts. Well, we really basically set the stage. Uh, I'm sure you've read Bustamante. Yes, sir. Well, let's proceed with that and we'll go from there. You're not going to be far wrong from Florida law. Well, I think the before I refer to the Bustamante case, I think it's important that the court be put in a position of determining whether it's Florida law that applies or the law of the search, the state where the search occurred. And of course, I would argue that from the integrity of this court and the integrity of the court of Florida, that the conflict should be re resolved and in, in the manner of adopting the law of the forum state of Florida to determine whether a consent in the search that we heard testimony in today was freely, voluntarily, and knowingly given. Well, you've got more of a basic threshold argument as far as that is concerned. <clears throat> this court would have to take into consideration the rulings of the Supreme Court of Utah, Mr. Bundy, as far as the concept is concerned. And the only collateral attack, or something in the nature of a collateral attack, would be a federal argument. As this court conceives the law, I think the state of Utah has ruled on it, and it is a provision of the Constitution, if you're well aware of, concerning full faith and credit and finality of the arguments as it relates to <coughs> seizure of the goods under the forum of where they're seized. This court would consider that the only possible collateral approach would be on the basis of some additional federal requirement, maybe not brought to the attention of the Utah court. However, uh, so that the record is patently clear, I am going to proceed with the concept that both arguments, or all three arguments, are in fact open. 
and I'm not going to close you out on that. Brevity has never been the keynote of this trial and probably never will be. So uh, I'll, let, I'll hear whatever you have to say. Well, I think, and I will do my best to acquaint the court with issues that are directly involved in the search, which did not come to the attention, or I would, would, would tell the court that these issues did not come to the attention of the Florida Supreme Court, or the Utah Supreme Court. However, I understand that the court has read the Supreme Court opinion, the Utah Supreme Court opinion, and will simply direct the court's attention to the findings of, of Chief Justice Ellett. And Chief Justice Ellett did not find that the search ruled on by the trial court was legal. The findings, the legal finding of Chief Justice Ellett in State versus Bundy was that there was evidence sufficient to justify the judgment of the court. It does not speak to the, the standards of law in Utah or anywhere else as applied to search and seizure and certain, the search and seizure issue involved in the Utah case. I think what we have here is simply a, a, a badly written opinion and one which is self-evident relies on virtually no case law and a very highly complicated appeal. And so I will say only that I don't believe reading of the Supreme Court opinion is dispositive or in any, in any way persuasive in determining the legality or illegality of the search that occurred in, in the subject of this motion. And let me go to the Bustamante case because it's so often referred to and because it's so important in consent search cases. And I think that this court must first recognize that in the Bustamante case, the United States Supreme Court narrowly decided the issues before it and concluded that its ruling on whether an advisement was necessary
Mm -hmm. right. Do you have them with you, ma'am? Yes, I do. Right. May we see them? You're only interested in one that shows the bundle. Yes, Sean. Not that concerned with the other detail. Other than to show reading content, Your Honor. We'll return all to the lady that you can. If we need to make a photo for them to the record, we'll give them. I don't want to.